when rewiring your brain there's really no right or wrong way of doing it and going about trying to change the way that your brain naturally wants to function every single day that you live your life i just wanted to talk about some some things that can help you on your path to rewiring your brain to thinking of the world in a different light in a different angle for people who are trying to change but are having a hard time trying to change their ways like i said before there's no wrong or right way of doing it the things that i want to talk about today are things that can help you open yourself up open your heart up to wanting to not react the same way when you uh when someone makes you angry or uh, not thinking that the world is trying to harm you when something difficult happens to you. Maybe it's an opportunity for you to grow and impress yourself. The world is so much greater and more grander and more gentle than what a lot of people think of nowadays um, when, when difficult things happen to them. And um, I just want to talk about some stuff that can smooth that out a little bit, allow us to have a little bit of grace, a little bit of love, and understanding, give ourselves room to breathe. Just be our truest selves in a way that is hitting a, a gentler angle, a loving angle, a angle where you can smile when someone gives you a hard time instead of getting mad, you know? And you can feel it, uh, how it affects you. At some point in time, there's gonna be a moment where you, you gotta uh, kind of question, am I abusing myself or am I helping myself? And that's the things I just wanna talk about and just to spread some love and really get into how I've been helping myself on a personal level. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is consumption. And consumption, it spans from the food you put in your mouth to the things you listen to, to the air that you breathe, the way that you think, the way that you receive things. For everyone that is unique, how much we understand in life is up to us and to our own unique development. Some, some people have harder times consuming certain things than others. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is just a unique perception. First thing is food. What are you choosing to eat each day? Is it, is it something greasy? Is it something uh, really spicy? Is it something oily? Is it like an oil that is good for you? It can span from um, what kind of water you drink. Is it purified water? Do you know how much minerals are actually in your water? And also, how is the water structured? That's another angle that a lot of people don't even think about. Is it structured in a way where it is natural for your body? Our body requires water to function, for our organs to keep on processing the way that they process, to allow our heart to beat. We don't even have to think about these things but yet our body does it for us. So what are we choosing to consume? What are we allowing our bodies to hear? What people are we talking to? What kind of attitudes do we allow ourselves by? Even the emotion levels. What are you consuming emotionally? Do you feel down a lot? Are you listening to maybe music that makes you feel angry? Are you by people who get angry really quickly or have high anxiety? What are you adopting into your life that you could change or not have to experience anymore. I'm not gonna say deal with things because we don't have to deal with anything, we choose to. For me, a healthy way of uh, changing the way that I experience life is that I get to do things. I don't have to do things. I don't have to deal with anybody. I get to talk to this person. And when it comes down to consuming things within your daily life, I just want to bring this up so that way we can ask questions and ask ourselves, what is it that I am consuming that is causing me to feel this way, to feel depressed or feel lost a lot, or to not have confidence in yourself? What comes into play with consumption is your breath work, the way that you are breathing, the pattern you're breathing, and the air that you're breathing around you. If you ever notice when you're feeling high anxiety or you're about to have a panic attack or you're in the midst of a panic attack, your breath rate is very shallow. It's up in your chest right in this area and you're not taking deep breaths not diaphragmic breaths you can't keep up with your heart rate you feel overwhelmed ask yourself these questions how do i naturally breathe am i breathing only down to here am i breathing down to my belly button down to my root chakra am i breathing in my chest am i only allowing myself to breathe just a tiny bit or am i even breathing through my mouth how much do you breathe through your mouth throughout the day how much mucus do you have in your body because that can, that can entail how much you breathe through your nose. If you have high amounts of mucus and your nasal passages aren't clear all the time, or maybe you have allergies around this time of year as well, and that kind of goes into play of the way that you're breathing or how you choose to hold your breath and transfer it, you know? And it's, it's 
been proven that with good breath work, diaphragmic breathing, you can help yourself. You can change things about yourself. You can become more self-aware. Your posture will be straighter because you will naturally breathe vertically. There's so many studies. If you look into breath work and see how it can apply to you, I bet you it'll help you. It's something that we as humans need to do. We need to breathe. And doing actions of worth, actions that will allow you to thoroughly take in everything that you need. Taking a deep breath will allow you to optimize the way that you use your human body and the way that you choose to carry yourself. Another thing is who you surround yourself with. There's ask that question. Is somebody stressing me out in my life? Um, am I giving power over to this person? Is there someone or something or some type of idealism that I have been giving power over myself to? Has this person been irritating me? Have I been giving in to this idealism that this person is irritating? Have I not been seeing clairvoyantly? Or maybe um, there's actually, there's a really good example for uh, giving power over to something that uh, I always thought was silly. My brother, he, he always thought that yellow lighters were bad luck. And I was like, why do you, why do you think that? And he was like, cause I had this one experience. It was one. Um, and then he latched onto it. And I think he liked the idea that the yellow lighters were bad luck. I think he thought it was funny too. But he was really given power over to that. And he was allowing yellow lighters to be bad luck. So he would always be a little fearful if, um, if, he, had, if he had a yellow lighter, if something bad was going to happen again. Little experiences can turn into lifelong experiences if we allow them. If we ask ourselves questions and we look into ourselves and we see, do I need this? Is this productive for myself? Then maybe we shouldn't have it in our life. And maybe we can let it go with a smile because we had our fun and we can laugh at things instead of making life more difficult for ourselves just by thinking so harshly. Another question you should ask yourself is, what am I producing? What am I emotionally projecting out to the world? What am I doing habitually? What habits have I been fulfilling faithfully that are not productive for myself or are productive for myself? I think when you think about what am I producing, you should have confidence in yourself and give yourself credit, but also hold the shit out of yourself. Literally, like let yourself know when you are being unproductive and BSing, when you are not fulfilling the things that you are stressed out about. Take advantage of the fact that you can do that because we are not helpless in this world. And as creator beings, we are always creating we are here to manage power, to do all things that we will to do, to manifest and have the things that we manifest be fulfilled and come forth in our life. And we get to choose what we create. And the more that we are able to manage our own power, choose what we produce, the happier or more fulfilled I believe we can be. That's what I feel personally. And that's what I'm talking about this because I feel more content and happier with myself when I, have no, when I know that I have done all the things that I have will to do, that I have channeled myself. I have rallied myself with my own integrity and chosen to do the things that I wanted to do in life and not the things that I had, that I felt like I had to do or that I felt like I was forced to do. And when it comes to facing things that we feel that we do not want to do, or definitely life hits us with some, some shits. It, it really drops some stuff on us. But when we find ourselves encountering these moments, if we can allow ourselves to see it in a different perspective, in a way that allows us to present ourselves productively and impress ourselves, I do believe that nothing will affect us if we will it. So when it comes down to experiencing life experiences that may feel difficult and you feel resistant to, and it just does not feel logical to you. Things that can help you are stoicism. Not being so sporadic outwardly where you're projecting um, and producing actions or reactions that are negatively affecting you and the others around you. Stoicism does not deny the emotion. It allows you to control what your next action will be. That is how you apply stoicism in a way that can keep you calm and collected. And stoicism entails that you still feel the emotions, that you're exploring what you're feeling. You're feeling them and you're allowing yourself to feel them. And you're being aware of the emotions that you're feeling. It does not deny you the exploration of self, but it allows you to acknowledge your emotions and then take action and detach yourself from the inner 
emotions that you're feeling. There is taking actions based off of emotions and there is taking actions that are based off of calculation that you allowed yourself to do before you took that action. It's okay to have detachment to personalness, to your emotion in life. Life is personal, but how personal we want it to be is up to us. So we get to choose what we produce and what we choose to experience. So if we want to have times in life where everything's difficult for us, then we will have difficult times. If we want to have a life where everything's fun, then we won't see anything as, as a, a responsibility or as a negative action. It is up to us. We give the balance. We are here to balance power, to manage ourselves in our own unique way. The last question I wanna ask um, is, are you of service to the universe? Are you of service to yourself? When it comes down to being in existence, a lot of people always think about how it applies to them, how it might how it may affect them, how, how situations tend to make you feel or how situations tend to serve you. And the questions that I, I wanna ask um, and that I tend to ask myself is how am I being of service to others? Did I do that intuitive action that I felt I wanted to do? And when you ask the question of how you are of service to others in, in the collective, to your mirror selves, it's not about doing a physical action all the time. It could be having a conversation. It could be looking at somebody in a different light how can you be of service to others how are you looking at life how is life being taken in by you do you feel like you want to intuitively do something do you feel like you would like to give a compliment to somebody and you denied yourself that moment being of service to others does not always entail getting money back from it it might come back in a different form of revenue it might come back in a way where somebody helps you later on maybe two years later, maybe a week later. A lot of people want things um, to come back towards them when they give it out. And it always does, but it doesn't always present itself in a way that we always want it to be. It could be an opportunity that we just ignored, that we didn't look at long enough or think about long enough, you know? There's been moments where I've really just flung something to the side if somebody wanted to have a conversation about it and it really could have opened my mind up about a certain topic and I just, I just denied it. Another way of being of service is trusting in the universe, allowing yourself to trust the things that are in your life. We experience things for a reason. Everybody says it, but do we really trust it? Do we really allow ourselves to manifest the energy of trust and graciousness? That's the questions that I tend to ask myself um, that I find being presented in my life quite a bit. When I feel anxiety or when I feel like something happen to me that I don't enjoy or appreciate instead of feeling like it's something negative maybe allowing myself to graciously have trust and know that things happen for a reason it could be my fault and that's when I have to give accountability for myself it could be somebody else's fault and that's when we have to maybe show graciousness or give them a little bit of accountability hold a mirror up in their face say hey this is something that I feel has been done and I and I wanted to talk about it I felt this urge to say something. Being of service to people and, and being around other people doesn't always have to be stating your opinion all the time either. It could just be gently being in someone else's presence. Have you ever been by somebody that got hurt and they didn't want you to touch them, but you wanted to be there for them? Sometimes being of service to others and to the universe is just gently being, listening, being in nature or appreciating something that you once uh, thought was ugly <laughs> or, um, or just simple, you know? Looking at the finer details of things. Maybe even looking at ants working hard, you know? Um, those little things can broaden into bigger things. What is small is large, what is little is small. Being of service to the universe is also allowing yourself to have balance. And allowing yourself to have balance could be opening up your mind a little bit more or maybe doing a physical activity a little bit more or pushing yourself to be a little bit more uncomfortable. So then when the uncomfortable happens to you, it doesn't feel so hard, so unbalanced, so unfair. At the end of the day, when it comes down to rewiring your brain, just ask yourself these questions that make you wanna stir and move in life. Ask yourself things that you've been ignoring but been facing every single day. There's things that are surrounding us right now that we don't even take into account or even think about. 
And we don't have to think about everything. We don't have to think about stuff we don't want to think about. But I ask that you guys ask yourself questions that will allow you to expand yourself to help yourself grow. Because if we can grow, everybody can grow. And we can give people the leeway, the ability to be themselves and not think of them harshly as if there's something wrong with them. When I ask myself questions like these, I, it, it allows me to have grace and to really try to be open and understanding to people around me because that's what I would ask of someone else is if they could understand me and just be empathically open and just love other people, you know? You, you don't have to give your whole bank account to somebody just to have a conversation. It feels like that sometimes, like it's taxing of your energy. And energy is currency. And sometimes we let people take our energy a little bit too much or sometimes uh, we give it up a little too easily. When we ask ourselves questions and we face ourselves, we really truly look into ourselves, we'll be able to understand when something is wasting our time or if we're wasting somebody else's time, you know?